Thine arrival is timely as ever. Thou didst chance to overhear my conversation with Living Way, I presume? was not mine intent to move in shadow. Nevertheless, I have been asked to do that and more yet again. Is it so plain that these strangers could intuit it at a glance? My capacity for silence and secrecy? And duplicity? When Grahatia did contrive to deliver the first at the price of his own life, I was complicit in the scheme. A sacrifice averted for a mercy. Would that I could say the same for Menphilia. One life for one world. And by that bloody bargain brokered by my hand were the scions robbed of a dear comrade and Flamine her beloved daughter. Two souls whose selflessness was beyond measure, whose resolve was unshakable. They would not be moved even had I thought to protest. But protest I did not. Far from it. I pushed them forward. No effort did I make to seek out alternatives, ones that would not demand such terrible costs. That resignation weighs heavy on my mind as does the memory of another lost to mine inaction. Dearest Moonbreather, who did face death unflinching, that we might secure a means to bring low the Asians. In her hour of need, I did naught. Dutiful disciple of Louisois, ever looking to the greater good, Had I shut mine eyes and bid her live instead, mayhap she would be with us today. Selfish wants born of everlasting regrets. Most days I put them from my mind, but could think of naught else when asked to swallow the same bitter draught subterfuge and sacrifice. Mayhap the right moral choice, but one I regard with great trepidation. The calamity of Amorot was a tragedy beyond reckoning, one which must never again come to pass. Thus must we struggle haunted by ghosts of those we have lost, clinging to those we pray we can yet save. But what of those we cannot? How do we make peace with the dreadful algebra of necessity? I am not alone in my discomfort, then. It is surprising, though perhaps not. We Scions are wont to debate strategy at length, but are resolute and unwavering in execution. Strange. Scarcely can I remember when last we spoke alone, and so candidly. I thank thee. For all my supposed skill with words, I find it difficult to express such private thoughts. As for the Loperit's proposition, I will take time and consider how to respond. It would be to our mutual benefit if we could converse more openly with our aspiring caretakers. A concern I should be glad to address on the Scion's behalf. To dispense with all pretense and bear one's heart to another is a frightening thing indeed. 
But we cannot move forward ere we take that bold first step. A lesson I have learned many times before. And today.
And uh, what, pray tell, do we seek at the Watcher's Palace? Oh, come off it, friend. You know full well why we're here. The time has come for you to return to Atheris and help your brethren prepare for their journey here and beyond. Forgive me, Living Way, but I cannot in good conscience proceed with this plan. Huh? But what about the final days? The death and the doom? Oh, we have to hurry before it's too late! Your unflagging commitment to your duty is endearing, to say the least. Be at ease. They bear you no grudge, nor do I. How could we, having come to understand your purpose? For millennia, you and yours worked tirelessly towards the singular purpose of this heavenly vessel's construction. An arduous feat by any measure. It is clear you have spared no effort. Why, your very names are a testament to your dedication. sure I understand what you're getting at. Names are an expression of the self, a declaration of one's hopes and aspirations. Your use of contemporary, uncomplicated nomenclature doth ensure clarity of purpose. There can be no doubt that your love for the people of Atheris is boundless and pure. Yes! Yes! A most mellifluous reason! We Loperids were born of Hydaelyn's love for Atheris! That shining, shimmering blue jewel, brightest star in the sky, with life and possibility. For as long as I can remember, I've toiled in anticipation of the day when this vessel might be needed. All I've ever wanted was to meet those she cherished so dearly. To serve and serve well. That goes for all of us, don't you see? So help us. Help us help them. Lead them here, where we can keep them safe! If there's anything wrong with what we've built, we'll fix it. We'll make it right. Your works want not for repair. Yet there remaineth much for you to learn of men, and your own kin besides. Singing way, thy name bespeaketh more than the simple marriage of rhythm and rhyme. The songs of Etheris are beyond counting, and span the length and breadth of emotion. Maps are monuments to man's pioneering spirit, and his devotion to charting the furthest reaches of our star. Many have devoted their lifetimes to exploratory pursuits, to venture unto the highest mountains and the deepest oceans in search of unknown frontiers. And thou, my friend, I... Oh, I do not think we have met. My... Uh, my name is Puddingway. Pudding way. Yes, indeed. A name of deep and abiding significance, I'm sure. But one perhaps better communicated through delicious deeds than tasteless words. A judicious application of fey magics at a later juncture may be appropriate. <clears throat> and living way. 
is no easy feat to convey the significance of thy moniker. Hmm. When I was a bookish boy, a dear friend of mine was fond of peppering me with questions as I read, to my occasional annoyance. One day, I posed to her a question of mine own. What doth it mean to live? After much contemplation, she proffered this answer. The anticipation of a half-read story's conclusion. The hope today's mistake may serve as tomorrow's lesson. The wish that a new acquaintance may one day call thee friend. She believed it to be all these moments and more. I... I want to understand, but... I, too, still labor to find mine own answer. T'would be my pleasure to assist you and yours in embarking on a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment. For thee. Ink as blue as the waters of Etheris. Made in haste, though I assure thee, the quality has not suffered for it. The people need not be persuaded by honeyed words. Nay, I have faith they shall do what is right in due course. Until they do, I beg your patience, friends. And with that ink, let us fill the empty pages of Living Ways Compendium. An open exchange of ideas will surely afford you all a better understanding of modern man, and with it, Ideas for improvements and renovations. But more importantly, it shall empower us to together find a way forward. I hope you're right. Thank you for this lovely gift. There you have it. I shall remain with the Loperitz to ensure that all is in order. Though we must needs prepare for every eventuality, you would all agree that the evacuation of our star is a last resort. To accept failure is to accept the demise not only of our star, but that of Reen's, of all reflections, and the souls that call them home which is why I have every faith that you shall fight to the last, that such drastic measures may prove unnecessary. Should the worst come to the worst, and I pray deeply that it won't, I'll take comfort in knowing preparations were made under your watchful eye. Aye, thou mayest be assured that if calamity cometh, not a soul will be left behind, if being the operative term. gracious of guests. Do convey our apologies to Growing Way and the others. But of course! And when next we welcome more guests from Etheris, we'll have learned to be much more hospitable hosts. Oh, and 
circling back to the matter of inappropriate secrecy, we ought to discuss our benefactors. Agreed. The Charlayan Forum, yes? What? How did you know? The more I heard, the more obvious it became. The Forum's aims align closely with those of your anonymous patrons. A telling coincidence would be an understatement. Though had we not taken it upon ourselves to peruse certain restricted tones in Labyrinthos, we might still be unaware of their plans. But let us continue this discussion upon our return. I dare say we have kept Alphino and the others waiting long enough. <laughs> <laughs>